Now, strictly speaking, about the first 72 hours in the wilderness in most situations, of course. Hopefully you don't find yourself out in the wild in the winter because it can be slightly more complex. And hopefully you have the best weather possible if you have to weather whatever storm. But there's a f two basic survival kind of seas that you want to focus on, and that is combustion and cover in the wilderness and the easiest way to properly prepare a knife such as this to help you with finding cover and starting fires is to carry a decent amount of cordage like you can see here um, so carrying a decent amount of cordage like you can see on this sheath and of course carrying a ferro rod. Now some consideration does want to be made to the particular knife you have. You want to try to choose something that is not terribly small and not terribly large. Now I would definitely lean towards the larger side if we are talking about survival because Smaller knives or more camp style knives really become more useful when it comes down to processing game animals, processing natural resources such as fungi or berries or things such as that, um, and also carving things like traps or even carving utensils and such. So camp knives really prove themselves to be more useful as smaller implements because they do more fine tasks, but in the broader sense of speaking when you're just trying to start a fire to stay warm and put some shelter over your head so the hypothermia doesn't get to you. The size of your knife is not particularly as important if it is a larger size knife. In fact, I would maybe even encourage a machete at that point just because you will be able to process things like spruce boughs or pine boughs at a much faster rate with a larger implement than a smaller knife. However, knives do have the ability to feather stick and baton with a little bit greater ease not so much that they are easier but just more wieldable so that is why you want to put some thought and some effort into the choice of your knife something like the cold steel SRK or aforementioned things like the Chris Reeve knives Pacific are definite worthy options now going back to the sheath you want to try to focus on making sure that you have at least six to ten feet of paracord this should allow you to uh, properly lash sticks or make different parts of a shelter should you need to um, of course you have the inner strands and outer shell of proper paracord that you can use at your disposal so say you have you know six feet just six feet of paracord well, eat. you have about, uh, if I remember correctly, you have about eight inner strands, or maybe it's seven, I think, uh, inner strands that are also six feet plus the outer shell. So if, say, you have six inner strands or seven inner strands, you have, you know, so let's say you have seven inner strands of paracord. That's, um, you know, altogether factoring everything, you have over 50 feet of cordage. Now, the inner strands will be small, but if you know how to use them properly, you can make a lot of things work. So that's why I lean towards paracord is because of those inner strands and how you effectively have, like I said, over 50 feet of cordage in six feet of cordage here. So it's pretty nifty and pretty useful. So that is the cordage element. Lastly is the combustion element. Now you want to make sure you have a good fire starter. For me it's a ferro rod, but ultimately you want to choose something that you're confident and capable with. Because in a real survival situation, it's not about looking cool, looking practiced, looking like an awesome survivalist. It's about making sure that you actually get out of there alive. So if you need a lighter or you need matches, Take the proper time to make sure that you have, you know, a waterproof container for your matches or that you have a waterproof lighter or a windproof lighter or, you know, use what you need to get the job done. For me, I carry a ferro rod because I'm very practiced with ferro rods and I can make ferro rod fires very easily. Also, in addition to that, the ferro rod is a very easy and reasonably bulletproof way of starting fires. You can see that it's very easy to throw on a sheath or rig up, and then you have your fire starter right there. But you want to use whatever you're confident and capable with at the end of the day. 
So that is the basics to how I set up a survival knife. It's not pretty, it's not the most elaborate, it doesn't have any fancy gimmicks like signaling mirrors or anything like that. This is as basic as it gets and ultimately I would try to make sure that I have something like a hatchet and a saw to pair with this tool, but if I don't, I know that between this knife, the cordage and ferro rod, I can at least survive 72 hours by being able to provide myself with a good fire and a decent or at least a livable shelter. So anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless and I'm out.